I was so struck by it, um, both because it was such a kind of captivating mystery, and I, I love that aspect of it. It was different than what you might expect in a in a teen novel, but also just how much it connected with uh, my own high school experiences. One night, right at the end of high school, uh, Margot shows up at his window, gets him out of bed, and leads him on a night of adventure and revenge against everyone that she knows. Uh, it's the best night of his life. And at the end of the night, he thinks, all right, things are going to be different now. Maybe this is finally it. We're going to be together. And then the next morning, she's gone. And no one knows where she is. Everyone has their theories. No one really knows. And then at some point, Q begins to find little clues left for him by Margot, and he thinks if he can follow these clues and find her, maybe they can finally be together. And along the way, like his friends and Lacey, who used to be Margot's friend, and Angela, Radar's girlfriend, all kind of band together and go on this journey as a, as a group. In the central relationship of, of Paper Towns is Q and Margot, and in that relationship, a lot of what actually exists is what Q has projected onto Margot and what everyone projects onto Margot. That's certainly the central relationship, but what's fun about the film is that we get to find within all of the relationships in it that there, there's a thread of that theme throughout. So there's a way that Q perceives Ben and wants Ben to be different, and Ben wants Q to be different and have more fun, and people want Radar to open up more, and Radar thinks that his girlfriend Angela wants him to be a certain thing that in fact, like, Maybe she doesn't want it all, and everyone thinks that Lacey is just a dumb popular girl, but she's eager to step outside of that. And as the movie progresses, that theme of the way we see each other and the way we actually are is kind of woven throughout, and it's a fun thing to kind of keep pushing against in the film. Who is the girl that comes to your window at midnight that you will jump out that window for, that you will, go, that you will drive 1,200 miles to go find? Who motivates that to happen? Who has so much energy? that she can wrap everyone up in her orbit. And Carl walked into the room, and it happened to the room. I mean, you could just see it. You know, she, she really came prepared. She did her work. And there was just this extra level of energy where, you know, we looked at a ton of excellent actresses for this part. Um, and there was something about when you were watching Carl where it didn't feel like acting. Like, it really, really felt like she inhabited it. And she had that energy and that she could, she could motivate this entire film. She could be the kind of the linchpin for it. Something that was interesting about the whole movie is with the entire cast, we, you know, we were all living in the same apartment building in Charlotte, North Carolina. And almost imperceptibly, everyone sort of just fell into their actual d dynamic. And there was this sort of bleed through between set and we were hanging out back at the apartments and on the weekend. and. You know, Carr was crazy and trying on outfits and running all over the place. And Halston, who plays Lacey, was a little bit the more responsible one. And Austin, who plays Ben, was getting into trouble and more hijinks. And Nat was kind of trying to hold the, the boys together. And Justice was very responsible and kept a little quieter. And everyone really, really fell into their parts. So it was this kind of magical thing. Halston Sage plays Lacey. Um, which was another hard part to cast because, again, you know, she's both an archetype but also needs to push past that archetype. And it was a similar thing with when Kara came in for Margot, when Halston came in. There was so much about the part that she could connect with. And I remember, similarly, we did a version of the bathtub scene, which is one of my favorite scenes from the book. And is a great scene in the movie where we had her speak a little bit more from her own experience and, you know, what it's like to, to be that kind of quintessential blonde girl in high school and have people sort of dismiss you and look past you and not really be interested in what you have to say. Um, and she could just connect with it so personally. And she just has such a kind of beautiful subtlety to the performance, you know, that, that all of these kids needed to have. I mean, you know, once you've established your main cast, everyone else needs to fit in with whatever that style is going to be. And she fit in so nicely to it. It's, really, it's a really beautiful, understated performance. There's a lot that I'm excited about. Um, the gas station was particularly fun to film. That was something from the very first moment I read the book, that gas station sequence, I was like, oh, I want to film that. That is going to be really good. And it uh, lived up to that entirely on set. It was really fun for everyone involved. There was a lot of running around and coordination. And it was a fun kind of marriage of some of our more intricate camera work with also some of the more fun performances in the film. Um, a lot of the stuff on their night out, the scene in the, in the SunTrust building, I think is, has some lovely performances from Nat and Kara. Um, I loved all of it. They, you know, it was just one of those sets where 
sometimes you get lucky, and our cast was just amazing, and they were great to work with, and everyone was fighting towards the exact same thing and wanted it to be great, and it just felt, it felt really right.